In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a super detailed Chrome type logo. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the workflow that I use to create this typography that you're seeing on the screen right now. This style, as you might know, is heavily, heavily inspired by an artist called Artyom Togo. I hope I pronounced their name correctly. They're amazingly talented, so check them out in the description down below. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I even came close to the amount of level of detail in there when I tried to recreate their style. But I figured I got a pretty good grasp of the basics on how to get started with this. And at the end of the video, I'll try to give you some pointers on how to continue detailing this even more. But without any further ado, let's get started started and dive straight into the video. All right, so we're in Cinema 4D, which is where we have the final design file, I guess. But I did most of the prep work in Adobe Illustrator. So let me just show you what I designed on there. All right, so this font is called Pest by Morgan Borowizisk. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I probably butchered the name, I'm sorry, Morgan. Anyways, she's an amazing type designer. I'm just gonna show you real quick. Uh, I bought well, I did, yeah, I paid like $1 for the trial version, so I cannot really use it in commercial projects, uh, but this font works so well with this style. So if you wanna get it for yourself and if you wanna use a commercial license, of course, please do so and support her because she's amazingly talented. Anyways, I'll link her font in the description down below um, and I'll type her name out for her just so you know what the name of this designer is without me having to butcher her name. There we go. So yeah, this is the type designer, uh, Morgan. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for creating such an amazing typography piece. Anyways, let's continue with the setup. So basically what I did then is I have these tribal scribbles here just like added into the logo. Uh, these are from my tribal scribbles pack. As you can see, I think I used this one. It's on the top here. And then this one, I think. And what's the final one? It's this one, I think. So these three shapes were basically dragged into there and made symmetrical, as you can see. Yeah, that's basically the setup of our shape. And before we did that, I just made sure that everything is outlined, as you can see here, but I also turned all of this into a compound path. So let's just do that right now. I'm just gonna make sure that I unite all of this. And now we are basically ready to drop this into Cinema 4D. But before we do that, however, I also needed, of course, this outline, this pinkish outline that you can see. So what I did for that is I selected my whole compound path. And actually this is still a group object rather than a compound path. So if we want to change that, we're going to go to object, compound path, make. And now what we can do is go to object, path, offset path, and change the joints to round. So you want to have the offset to 25 pixels. So the next thing that you want to do is basically make sure that you have your uh, logo setup and the outline in a separate file and you can just save these as adobe illustrator files next what you want to do is you want to open a new cinema 4d project you want to go to file merge and then just import your illustrator files that you just made click on ok and i'm going to do the same thing with the outline click on ok and now if we zoom in here it's really flat as you can see i'm just going to make sure that all of this is set to zero the layer offset path spread and extrude depth i'm going to turn the extra depth to 0.1 actually and the height to 200 and i just turn off the logo outline as you can see right here we're going to worry about that later so in order to create that like smooth metal effect i guess what we want to do is turn this into a volume builder under the volume builder tab we'll hold all the option on our keyboard and click on the volume builder and then do this one more time for the volume measure so that way our logo flattened is now a child of the volume builder and the volume builder is a child of the volume measure and this might have turned your logo invisible as you can see right here so if we click on the volume builder here under the voxel size we're going to make this point one and this will may have a long calculation time but it honestly is fine uh, i think it's because of my computer i'm not sure then you want to add a dilate and erode and we'll press this to 0.2 i guess to make it a little bit thicker i'm going to change the display to grow shading lines and i also want to add an sdf smooth in here and turn the voxel distance to one so actually i'm going to change the height here to 35 and the extra depth to 0.5 
This will make this a little bit smaller but thicker, but this way we actually have a better view of what we have created so far. This already looks pretty sick. We are going to add all the octane materials later, but for now what we also want to do is create this outline. So what we can basically do is just copy the volume builder and the volume measure and then just delete the logo flat in here and drop the logo outline in there to see if we can create the same effect. So there's actually some stuff that we kind of want to change around with the outline here. So we want to change the extrude depth here to 1.5 to make it a little bit thicker, as you can see. In the volume builder, we're going to click on the dilate and erode. And of course, this logo outline has to be at the bottom here. The dilate and erode, we're going to turn to 0.45. Oh. And this is all the volume measure of the outline, of course. Of course, the outline is now completely overthrowing the initial logo that we made. So what we want to do is use the logo to cut out a hole inside of the outline, if that makes sense. So I'm going to just press Control C, Command V to paste in our logo flattened here and drop that into the volume builder of the outline. And in the volume builder, let's just move this in between the smooth and the die and erode and change the union to subtract here, the mode. And this will basically make sure that our logo here, the flattened logo, will be punched outside of the outline, if that makes sense. What we also need to do is change the extra depth to four centimeters and move this thing to minus two in the Z axis to just move it a little bit back, if that makes sense. And as you can see, this now has that like inflated like bloated look as if it's two liquids basically like not being able to to melt together or to mix together if that makes sense so the next thing that we want to do is kind of see if we can move our logo a little bit more to the front to have it pop out a little bit better and we can always play a little bit more with the sdf smooth maybe if we change the voxel distance and make it a little bit higher the roundness here around the edges is getting a little bit more smooth if that makes sense well yeah that's the main setup here and if you want to basically make this a little bit more smooth or make the ge geometry make a little bit more sense what you can do is just go here and make the volume measures a child of the remesh and this will have a little bit of calculation time and in the meantime what we can do is i'm going to make my setup in octane but of course feel free to do this in redshift or in any render that you prefer but for me, I'm going to create an Octane camera here, reset all of the positions and then just move it a little bit more to the back. And let's see if we can just cover it. And while our remeshes are still running, what we can do is make two new Octane materials. I'm going to make one metallic material and one glossy material. And underneath the metal material, let's open the node editor. We'll make it full screen right here. What we can do is we're going to make an Octane noise. And we're going to map that to the bump channel. We're going to go and add a projection node to that. And under the projection node, we'll change this to XYZ to UVW. Click on lock aspect ratio. And we're going to scale this down to 0.005. So we can just really, really small. We're also going to add in an octane gradient in between these two here. And just lower the contrast a little bit, make this a darker gray. And we want to up the octaves to all the way up to 16, the omega to 1. And now we're going to play with the contrast and the gamma a little bit more. And basically what we're looking for is a really rough, pointy, bubbly, roughened uh, metal, if that makes sense. We want to just copy this bump node here and go to our glossy material here and paste it in. We can just use that the same way. And under the color, I'm gonna make this a nice little magenta color. And what we can also do is drag this texture node, the gradient one, uh, to the roughness as well to make it a little bit less shiny. All right, so I've tweaked this a little bit and actually, to be honest, we can just delete this gradient node right here. And let's lower the contrast just a little bit somewhere around here and up the gamma to somewhere around here and now we should have something similar to our initial design that i showed you in the beginning of the video when i experimented before i did this live and now we just want to drag this glossy material to the outline and we want to of course drag the metal to our logo here so now let's open up the octane renderer and i'll share my settings right here these are my standard settings So 
all we need to do is add a couple of lights. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I add any lights is add a null object and we'll call this center. Next, we're gonna add in some octane area lights. I'm gonna right click on that octane area light and then go to animation text, target, and just drag the center into that target. And now if we open up this, once we start moving our light node around, it will always face the center as you can see right here. If we click on the light and then click on visibility, I'm gonna turn off camera visibility. And we're gonna use this as a nice dramatic backlight that you can see right here. And then I'm gonna hold control or command on my keyboard to make a duplicate of this light. And then I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and then all the way to the front of the light here. And we're gonna lower the power of the light as well in the light settings, which you can see right here. Maybe a little bit higher. We'll do this from the top down, I think. Get a little bit smaller and put it a little bit closer to there and then just lower the power again to get that dramatic lighting effect. And what I like to do is just go outside of my camera for a moment and just zoom in a little bit and see if the bump is actually doing something here. So for the metal, it does work pretty well, but I don't really see it here in the octane node editor. And that's of course makes sense because it's not in the bump anymore. So I'm just gonna make a duplicate of that and up the contrast a little bit more, I think. This of course is always a lot of tweaking and I can sit here and show you the tutorial on how I created these exact settings. But I think once you follow along with the tutorial and you're working with the materials and stuff like that, you're probably gonna tweak them yourself to your liking a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I like these little bumps in there. I think that's fine for now. Um, I think the glossy material works really well with the backlight right there. And maybe what we'll do is a, have a small little light from the bottom on the left here as well. And lower the power of that as well to maybe like two or three, just so that the left part of the logo isn't like darkened out that much. Some stuff we can do now is click on our camera here, go to the camera imager, click on the spectral AI denoiser and turn it on so we don't have any noise in our composition. We can also open the post processing and add a little bit of bloom to this. Of course, you don't really wanna overdo it. So what I try to do is maybe like add in some glare power. You can also play around with the glare blur and blur it off a little bit. And with the bloom, you can use some cutoff in there, but this adds that nice hazy little glow effect. So back in the camera imager, we can also add in a little bit more saturation and there we go. So again, what I wanna do is go and make a second camera. So I'm gonna copy and paste my camera in here. And I just go to zoom in a little bit on our image here from the side. So if this, I usually leave these two camera in my composition so I can just play around with like, for example, the material settings or maybe like the depth of the volume measure of the outline to tweak some stuff. And then I could just go back to the main camera to just render my composition. So like I said, if you want to change a couple of more things in here, what I would do is check off the remesh because that will speed up the process of that a little bit more. And in this case, if I want to play around with the volume measure, I'm just going to turn off the render for now so that the octane render isn't like doing anything while I'm just changing this. And what we can do is of course, just see it there, play around with the dilate and erode. I think the smoother this becomes, like the, the more it turns away from it. And if you wanna see what it looks like is you can also just completely turn off the uh, logo part so you can kind of see what the outline is actually doing. Anyways, guys, this is the main render setup that I've made so far. If you wanna download this for yourself and experiment with it, it's pretty much procedural. So you can just simply load in your own Illustrator files and see and play around with the Octane and Cinema 4D settings. And of course, you also get access to the tribals in vector format in this as well. And the link for all of that will be in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you find it useful. I hope you learned something new in here. This is a little bit more of a messy tutorial. I always find it a little bit difficult to show a full on process in Cinema 4D and Illustrator and maybe even other softwares in the course of maybe like 30 minutes max. But maybe I gazed over some stuff too quickly. Maybe I went too fast. And if that's the case, please do let me know. Like I said, the project files can be found in the description down below. If you make something using this tutorial, feel free to share it on my Discord server or tag me on Instagram. And if you have any tutorial suggestions for yourself or any remarks about this video, please leave a comment down below. And of course, if you wanna support my channel, don't forget to leave a like, 
subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. And if you want to spur me even further, consider getting some assets from my web shop or subscribe to my Patreon page. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I hopefully see you guys in the next tutorial.